Amen. Amen. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. <laughs> hey. That's right, babies. Woo. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. They said that was one of my grandfather's favorite songs. And when we would sing it, the biggest thing that I, I recognize that what we used to do is he used to make a step. Um, <laughs> and, and I didn't really All right, Sean. until just now. <laughs> what he was making a All right, Sean. Yeah, step huh? in the face. All right. So what, what I recognize is that my grandfather was a man of faith. And so what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what I was asked to do. Um, um, one of the biggest things that uh, I recognize about my grandfather is, um, and when I talk to my grandmother, I told my grandmother I was going to do, um, when I did something, I was going to use my grandfather's words. And so one of the biggest things that I recognize is um, when he was sick, I would go over to the house and I, would, I asked him, I said, Papa, what you need me to do? What you need me to do? Like, you can't do nothing right now. If y'all know Bishop, he was one of those dudes Don't like it. where he couldn't stop moving. Mm -hmm. Bishop didn't know how to not move. Right. He was the taxi driver. He was the pastor <laughs> of the church. Yep. When we didn't have a musician, he was a musician. He did everything. And so one of the things that I asked him, I said, hey, Papa, you can't do much right now, so... What, 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 what you need grandson to do? And the biggest, one of the things he had me do was he had me go back to his father. And he, there was a lot of things he passed to me, but one of the things he passed to me that I didn't recognize the significance of it until later on was he said, go back and grab every sermon I preached from 1995. Mm. And I grabbed every single one of them and I haven't gone through them all yet. It's, that's what, about 30 years worth of, 20, almost 30 years worth of stuff. <laughs> so, so, it's going to take a little bit. <laughs> but one of the things that, um, that, he, uh, that I remembered him preaching, and it was, we have to go from the I believe to the I know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, one of the things I want to leave everybody with on this day that we lay him to rest is I want you to go from the I believe and say, now I know. In Matthew chapter 6, uh, 16, we see a, a story where Jesus was talking to his disciples and, 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 and the Pharisees and the Sadducees and there was a conversation and, and the conversation uh, uh, about where the Pharisees and the Sadducees was trying to test God and tempt God and, and tempt Jesus and they came back and they said, they simply said they were trying to, uh, I like to say they were trying to be fans. They were trying to be fans. And even when you look at it, they were fair weather fans because Jesus even came back and said you were fair weather. And so I'm a sports guy. If you look at it now, we got a lot of Golden State Warriors fans because they know they're going to win. Mm -hmm. All right. We got a lot of people that are Jesus fans because they know he's going to win. Mm -hmm. But that's what Bishop was trying to tell us. You believe he's going to win, but do you really know him? Because a lot of us believe in him, but we really don't want to know who he is and have a relationship with him. That's going from belief to faith because faith is intimate with him. And so one of the things that Bishop taught me, one of the things that Bishop taught me was, Bishop told me, he said, grandson, you got to walk with God. Now I understand why his favorite song was we come this far by faith. Why? Because it took faith for Bishop to lay in a bed and continue to say, I'm holding on. Ah. Nobody was there when Bishop was saying, I'm still holding on. Every single time I come see my grandfather, my grandfather said, I'm holding on. Every single time we went to go see Bishop, you wouldn't have thought he was sick based on his conversation. You wouldn't have thought he was sick, sick based on the communication and the things he was trying to do. I remember when they took his voice away, he still was talking over the train. Yes, yes. 
man, I, it took me a while to realize, <laughs> Popo, you being hard-headed, it wasn't that Bishop was being hard-headed, it was that he had faith that he was going to be able to talk again. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yes, yes, yes. He always knew that he was going to get delivered out of whatever situation he was put in. Right. And he did not let a disease right. that they said was going to kill him mm -hmm. deter his faith. Right, right. Yes. And so what we got to understand and what we got to recognize is through Bishop, if we're going to honor the legacy of Bishop, the first thing we got to do is we got to have faith. Yes. Because now we're still living. Right. And if I'm not crying too many tears, guess what? You can cry, but you can't cry for too long because we still got to live. Right. I remember when my great-grandmother passed away. My great-grandmother passed away 15 months ago. And when she passed away, the number one thing my grandfather said before he got <laughs> sick, he said, guess what? Mama dear gone, but guess what? She ain't got to struggle no more. So we can't cry too much for Mama dear, because Mama dear, she's resting now. Right. She's not in pain anymore. Right, right. And so now I get to say the same thing to my family about my grandfather, yeah. because I believe he would have said the same thing. He would have said, listen, you can cry, cry for a season, but you got to move on because guess what? I'm not struggling anymore. Right. I'm not battling right, the right, anymore. Right. Why? Because now I'm walking now. I'm resting. I'm at peace because I left an inheritance for my sons and my daughters. Blessed Father. Yes. One of the biggest things that I recognize that my grandfather did is, is he's not like every time, definitely it's typical in the black community, every time you have a, 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 a funeral or a death in the family, they often leave the family with death. Mm. They often leave the family with nothing. My grandfather didn't leave his family with nothing. That's right. My grandfather <coughs> made sure that we were taken care of. My grandfather, even when he was laying in the bed, was orchestrating and making sure that his kids were taken care of, mm -hmm. that his wife was taken care of, that his grandkids were taken care of. He even did it so. I remember when I first got married, my grandfather told me, he said, grandson, <coughs> I need to get your wife's information. I said, for what? That's right. Come on. You better see it. <laughs> you better tell him. Well, well, what you need her information for? I got to add her onto the life insurance. That's policy. right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Everybody That's doesn't understand do. that kind of father. All right. A father leaves an inheritance for his children's children. children. Uh -huh. yes, <clears throat> and the fact that there is an inheritance left for me and I'm his grandson means that he was a great father. Mm -hmm. yes. Now I know how to take care of my great grandkids. All right. Right now. Because now it's my job to live on the legacy that my grandfather left by making sure my children's children are set up. He didn't just set his children's children up, but he set up nieces and nephews and he was there for them just like the father. And so one of the biggest things that if we, if we, when we leave here, when we leave there, here, when we go put his body into the ground, tears are going to be shed. We're going to mourn. Hey, and guess what? The Bible says, blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted. So it's not our job not to stop from mourning. But what we got to do is we got to allow Holy Spirit to comfort us and to give us the things that Bishop wanted us to give. Because I'm guaranteeing you right now, I can hear Paul Paul saying right now, grandson, you need to go take it out the trash. Right. <laughs> right, right. I can hear him saying it now. I can hear him saying, yeah, I'm gone, but what are you doing for the house? What are you doing to take care? Make sure mama's all right. What are you doing to make sure your mom's okay? What are you doing to make sure your wife is okay? Because that's what he was focused about. Everybody talks how he was a community man. He was a community man, even in Phoenix. All we talked about in Arizona was Spring, Texas. <laughs> 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 All we talking about was spring sessions. And my wife, my wife, me and my wife, we have a little joke. She get mad at me because I tell her all the time, I said, I'm a country city boy. Because I grew up in Phoenix, but I had a country grandpa, so he got the countryside out of me. So that's why I got a little country in me. Because he always made sure we knew where we came from. He always made sure we knew where home was. And so that's why when my grandmother, I remember my grandmother told us when Popo passed, she said this, she said, we're going, when we were talking about funeral arrangements, she said, we're going to take his body back home. I know y'all may not like it, 
but we're going to take his body back home. I said, no, his body needs to go back home. Because now there's some things here that I didn't get to see because we were out there. But now I have a reason to bring my kids back here to come see Papa and see where Papa grew up and see what Papa did. Because the little things like what Pastor Hester said, I did not know he was the first black man to make a varsity basketball team. And we honor so many people. We honor so many people definitely in this Black History Month. And don't recognize we have a legend right in front of us. Yeah. All right. yeah. Yeah. And so the biggest thing that I want to make sure everybody knows is that Bishop, my grandfather, was a legend. He was a hero that was well known. But the reason why he was who he was was because he shifted his mentality from just believing in God to wanting to know who he was. That's good. So if you leave